back. Today I'm excited because we also have another guest today joining us. This is Cindy from Coachella. Cindy, do you want to say something to everyone? Hello, everyone. My name is Cindy. Like Kim said, I'm so excited to be here with you guys and share a little something that we uh, plan together. And yeah, I hope that everyone's doing well and it's a privilege to be here. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Today what we're going to be talking about is about what does it mean to accept God and how does that reproduction look like when you accept God? How are, are we supposed to live after that? So we're going to get started, but first we're going to pray. So, we so like if you pray? guys want to close your eyes, bow your heads, wherever you guys are, we're going to get started. Uh, Father God, thank you for another day, for the privilege that it is to be able to wake up. I pray that this lesson, uh, whoever watches it can get something out of it, that you speak to their hearts, you speak to their lives, and may they walk with truth, they may walk with love, and most of all, Lord, that they may walk looking at you. I pray that um, whoever encounters this video um, is blessed with it. I pray that you guide us, you guide Kim and I, um, our words, that they come from your heart. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So what does it mean to accept God? And then, like, what's one of the questions they usually ask? Yeah. Like, A lot of people have, um, maybe you've been in church for your whole life, but maybe you're not exactly sure what it looks like to be converted or maybe the process that it conveys. And we want to talk to you guys a little bit about that. We want to talk to you guys about the first step in uh, converting and what it takes uh, to really uh, have that process of conversion. Yeah. And a lot of people may ask, you know, do you think you're a good person? Do good people get into heaven? Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm a good person. I'm going to go to heaven. <laughs> but that's not the case. It's not because you're out serving your community. It's not because you're out being a good person. I feed the homeless. <laughs> yeah. I do this. I do that. <laughs> it's not about works. It's about faith. And it's about believing in God and who Jesus sent uh, who God sent Jesus on the cross to die for our sins. So, and not only that, if you believe you're a good person and you believe you're going to heaven, you're not going to really be seeking a savior. Yeah. Or So if we're do, good people, we wouldn't really need a savior. We wouldn't need someone to come and be better than us if we're already good people. You know, it doesn't drive us to seek someone bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think losing yourself... Uh, the Bible tells us, you know, um, losing ourselves and finding him will find our life. Giving our life to him, that's where we'll find our life. Mm -hmm. And um, the first step to um, this process of conversion is acknowledging that we need a savior. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging that we need someone other than ourselves uh, to come and save us, to come and um, to be saved. Yeah, so we have, if we are sinful in nature. Jesus came to die for a reason. Like, oh, so I can't save myself. I can't <laughs> do it by my own works, by me helping out other people and just being nice. But it's, I have a sinful nature. I've done something in my past. Have I ever reconciled to God? And this is not just for the people who are barely listening about Jesus for the first time. And like, have you accepted God? This is also for those who have been in church for a long time and they think they're okay and they keep yeah. on sinning and well god forgives yeah. and that's it but it's not just about going to church either it's not just about doing these good works it doesn't matter how long you've been there if you keep being in sin you're gonna keep being separated away from god and you might not even know it so that's more dangerous yeah so maybe you're new uh to church to this whole um needing a savior and maybe you're asking yourself why do i need a savior and maybe you're in the other opposite end where you've been in church like him said and now you're wondering how do i get out of sin um we are one the first reason is we are sinful and nature like him said you know we from the start from adam and eve we see um the the sin um you know we see the reproduction that it made for our humankind and it goes to show that you know alone we are really nothing and we need someone to come and help us with that sinful nature that we have as humans 
Yeah, and if you say, oh, well, I don't know if I've sinned. I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, let's look at what is sin or what are some of the sins that keep us away from God because God came for us to get us into heaven because that wasn't an option before. So these are some of the things that say uh, who will not enter the kingdom of God. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. So we got 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. 9 verse 9 don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of god don't fool yourselves those who indul indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. So if you've seen yourself <laughs> in one of these categories, like, ooh. <laughs> Maybe you're like, oh man, I am a sinner. <laughs> or I'm not a good person. <laughs> you know, it gives us a whole list of things that maybe you've practiced before maybe you still find yourself doing mm -hmm. and this is why um we're not considered good people you know at the end of the day we this is our human our human nature our sinful nature and a lot of people do fall into these categories and maybe you're thinking man like what do i do now what how do I escape from this? Yeah, like, I went to hear, and these will not enter the kingdom of God. Scary. It's like, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. um, when I die, when that day comes, I want to get to heaven. <laughs> like, what do I do? Okay, tell me what do I do? <laughs> yeah. Um, or maybe you've accepted God, you've been walking with God, and you've fallen back into your old sins, full nature, back into temptation, and you don't realize you've been separated from God again. There, you need to get reconciled. So there's also, uh, if you were, you're like, oh, well, I don't fall into any of these, I'm good. <laughs> there's also Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40. So this says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? They're asking Jesus this. And Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So that's loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's giving him everything. And, you know, when you wake up, that's, Lord, here I am. <laughs> um, putting him in first place. He is the king of my heart. He is on the throne. He is in this temple. He is the God of this temple. Yeah. And a lot of us put our jobs in front of him are other people in front of him priorities in front of him like oh i don't have time to read your word today god because i'm doing this or i'm rushing here i'm rushing there it's all about different priorities instead of actually having him as the center and actually every decision you know that you're trying to make is with him in mind and yeah. your actions it's with him in mind with everything it's with him in mind when he's really governing your heart yeah and fun fact us humans are made out of three, and it just said it in that verse, um, soul, heart, and mind. And that's renewing those every day. Um, we, if, for example, maybe your thoughts, maybe if you struggle with anxiety or depression, that's something that's in your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can cause physical... Um, mm -hmm. Nervousness. Um, like, yeah, it can cause physical uh, uh, reactions as well. Chronic diseases, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and if you we think about that, um, you know, are we really giving all, like, completely to him? Because mm -hmm. we're made out of three parts. And like you said, some of us, you know, I'm sure that if we're good now, I'm sure that we've struggled with it in the past where our job was our priority mm -hmm. or maybe school or maybe a relationship and we've put God second on where the first thing we think about is um, a person or mm -hmm. a job or I have to finish school or I have to get here on time and God is second mm -hmm. and it becomes a problem because we're more likely to sin or to fall into this um, pattern of behaviors of maybe your sin is attitude, um, you know, that adi an attitude that leads you into a different action of uh, reacting a way you shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Or um, school, you know, a lot of us, if you're a college student, um, you know that pressure of having to finish school. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times we forget that God exists 
and we have this is our priority i yeah. have to do it you yeah know? like if i don't do this assignment um i'm gonna get a bad grade yeah. and that's gonna affect my whole life <laughs> <laughs> so it's like god i read the bible verse there we go and <laughs> now back to studying and then morning i have to get ready for this class i'm running late I'm going to sleep i'm working on my assignment i barely even had time to like think about god and mm -hmm. yeah and it's all like it's always fast paced and you're always thinking of other things instead of god and putting him in that back burner yeah. and so it's very we have to be very careful with that not over what's that one word putting a lot on our plate we're to the point where we're flowing with yeah, stuff yeah where we're not even thinking about god or we are but we're not really having a relationship with him communicating with yeah. him all the time and then uh, the second part too um going on to um the second part of this is we already talked about needing a savior and for those who have been in church you know who that savior is and for those who haven't this savior that we're talking about is acknowledging that jesus is that savior jesus is lord you know and for those that have been congregating and have years knowing him um our maybe a question for you guys is to reflect on do you really know who jesus is Good. do you spend enough time uh to get to know him mm -hmm. and for those who are new um, this savior that we're talking to you about is his name is Jesus. You know, God gave his only son, Jesus, for all of us, for all of our sins and uh, to cleanse us, to um, make us a better uh, person, you know, because alone we're nothing, yeah. you know. And for those who have been and who think that they do know him, do you guys really know him or do you guys have set other priorities before him? Mm -hmm. you know? or maybe you did know him and have a relationship and then you straight off straight away yeah yeah and then you're like what does that bible verse say <laughs> <laughs> but um and you just forget about his word and who he is because you have all these other cares or people yeah. in your life uh we're gonna go to romans 10 9 through 10 which is if you do know who jesus is and or you get to know him you're like i want him i know i've sinned and i need him I am a sinner, I am unholy, and the only way to get holy, to get to know Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, is to become more like him. Yeah. The more you seek of him, the more you're going to become like him. He's holy, you're going to become holy. You're a sinner, don't worry, <laughs> you can have that relationship with him. Do you want me to read it? Uh, you can go ahead and read it. It says, Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. So if you believe, and then you confess, you will be saved. You know, And that faith that we're talking about is that believing that trust in him that he is the one coming to save us and then we confess it mm -hmm. um and it repro uh, reproduces to living in faith as well mm -hmm. and um there's another one too um we've been talking about we want to reach our audience you know and we know that a lot of um the people that do watch are a little bit older um, our age probably too mm -hmm. and we know that it is a struggle mm -hmm. you know it is a struggle sometimes to keep your your um, priorities straight or to keep looking forward without trying to always look like oh but I did this or what mm -hmm. about what I wanted to do or what about um, this career or this job um, that I want you know and it distracts us from this mm -hmm. but when we come to the realization that God has sent his son Jesus to, to die for our, for our sins and for our lives. We take into consideration um, repentance, what it is to come and to repent from those distractions, what it is to come to repent from um, many situations that have strayed us away from him, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, relationships or a job or your school, whatever that... Um, thing is um we come and we surrender it mm -hmm. so repentance so we know we've sinned and now we confess to god i struggle with this yeah i you know what it, i don't know what your struggle is or if covid made you go back to the struggle whether it's drinking whether it's uh, looking at pornography 
or uh, whatever it may be, you know your sin, you know what category you fall into. <laughs> um, and it's like, God, I... I don't, don't know, know what, what to, to do. do. <laughs> yeah, I, I am having a hard time. And th- yes, when you really realize you need a savior because I can't do it on my own. <laughs> this flesh keeps going towards that way. I'm done. I'm done with it. I want you. I am struggling with this. I really need you to step in here and be the one to help and guide me and lead me. Put uh, And then he'll do it. He'll put thoughts in your head like, remember, don't do that. Or remember, he'll give you options and it's dim- then it's your choice. And we're sealed. Walk away or yeah. stay in that. We're mm-hmm. sealed with the Holy Spirit too. So that holy, the Holy Spirit acts like that mm-hmm. little bow sometimes. Like, hey, you're getting closer to the sin. Like, run, run away. You know, it's that little bow that rings and rings and rings until it it alerts you to literally flee from mm-hmm. that sin. And that's what the Bible tells us too. Like, flee from it. Like, mm-hmm. run from it. You know, yeah, get away from it. But maybe you don't know how, and maybe this is your first step. You know, and what is repentance? You know, what what is repentance? Uh, what does it look like? Um, yeah. Kim was saying, um, oh, yeah. it's not necessarily <laughs> like going crying. to the altar and crying. I'm sorry, God. That is part of it, but that part of getting down to your knees and crying that is part of it. But the next step, you don't just stay down. You get back up. So what does that getting back up look like and walking now that straight and narrow path? And we're not going to stay down, but our straight and narrow path, the way we walk, the way we talk, that's going to change. That means you really repented right there. That means I'm not going to keep on doing this. Sorry, God, and keep on doing it, keep on doing it. That's not repentance right there. Repentance is your walk, how you walk after it. So what Kim is talking about actually... um as humans, we see it as guilt or remorse. And guilt and remorse only leads you to repentance, to surrendering. But like she said, you don't stay there. You don't feel guilty after you repented. You don't feel guilty or um, bad about yourself after you came and surrendered that. But you pick yourself up. Obviously, God does it for you, too. He gives you the strength to walk a straight path, to, to not fall into the same thing over and over again because then that just creates um guilt in someone's heart you know where Mm -hmm. maybe they they just feel guilty and they they want to come back but then they fall again and it's that guilt that brings them back but not true repentance Mm -hmm. but when it's true repentance you know that yes maybe it's like kim said you might cry you might fall on your Mm -hmm. knees you know um and when that happens, something, it's the change that happens where you come back up and you start walking a straight path, like Kim was saying. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go on to Romans three twenty three through 24, because we have all gone through this. <laughs> <laughs> Romans three twenty three. So for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's everyone. We can't say I've never sinned. We can say (laughs) we're born sinners. We're born sinners. Yeah. So we can't say we don't need God. We need God. We have all fallen short and we need him daily. So that's what it means to take up the cross daily. It doesn't mean, oh, (laughs) when you first believe you take up your cross and that's it. No, he specifically (laughs) says, take up your cross daily and follow me. So daily we have to be knowing that he resurrected for us and we are dead to sin and alive in him. And there's um, some people say, I'm about to get off the cross right now. Oh, <laughs> you know <wow>. when <laughs> like when reactions are going to come out? Oh. And some, I mean, people joke around like that. Like some people get off the cross like and they never come back sometimes, you mm-hmm. know. But it's like him saying, like renewing your heart, your mind and your soul every day to take up that cross, to find that... Um, life that we have in jesus Mm -hmm. it's forgetting the past and looking forward to what's ahead yeah so that is gone that old sinful nature is gone i am new today god what do you want to do today (laughs) let's live today yeah and it's not necessarily focusing like that guilt part where i did this and every morning remembering uh, i did this and this is how i was but now it's like every morning remembering he died for me i'm living for him yeah and living in a way that pleases him and if you're scared of being short like falling short from the glory of god we have good news romans 3 24 says they are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus 
So he gives us the opportunity, you know, it says freely, justified freely. You don't have to pay for it. God already paid that price with Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. He gave us his son for him to cleanse us. So he's really not asking anything else from you but to come and to repent and to accept mm -hmm. um, that gift that he has for us. And to follow him. Yeah, to and follow him. And those who love him obey his commandments. Yes. Yes. So we're going to go to John 14, 6. So John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you're like, I believe in God, but you don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> well, but the same, yeah, the same person, but just made flesh so you guys can see and have an example. So he has always been there. It says, in the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh. So it all combines it all together. It is him, and then if you don't accept Jesus, then you don't accept that those sins being forgiven on the cross because he was that gift for our sins. He mm -hmm. became sin, sin for yeah. us, you know. And like Kim was saying, um, the word of God says in John fourteen again, uh, John fourteen six. Jesus told him, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." So there's three things, you know. Um, the way, the way we live, the truth, what we believe in, what our faith is in, and the life. Um, our whole expectations, you know, sometimes where, again, you know, when I was younger, I am sure I'm like, I'm a good person. I don't, I don't need no one, you know, <laughs> but I'm a sinner. Um, and thank God um, that I was able to recognize that because my life has been so different. And when we acknowledge um, that we need a Savior and we acknowledge that that Savior is Jesus, our life flips, you know. And it's until you don't feel that guilt where it's true repentance that you, your life starts switching around. And we start seeing that, hey, you know, he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life that we have to live for. Mm -hmm. And as... It's been a while now where the word reconciliation has been popping into my head a lot. Like, oh, you need to get reconciled. You need to get reconciled. Uh, and before I didn't realize it was to Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, like who? To what? <laughs> I'm like, to yeah. who again? And then, um, but it's like, it's to him. And then it's, what is reconciliation? Uh, I had a situation. If you don't know what I do, my name's Kimberly. <laughs> uh, I'm a program coordinator. She's like, hi again. <laughs> hi again. Uh, I'm a program coordinator at work. So this is what I do. I do programs for residents. I do events and stuff. And then in November for Thanksgiving, we had a Thanksgiving event. And before I showed up, I, was, I had been training someone. Someone was new. And then so I came to go help out for an event. And before I went, she's like, Kimberly, we have a problem. <laughs> and there had already been like a little fight beforehand. Something happened. So when I got there, it was already over. But two minutes later, I'm like serving. And then, bam, they come through the door. <laughs> like two people just yelling. And then one kind of stopped, but one kept going at me. And I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I'm like, in order to be here, you need a reservation because of COVID. We're only allowed certain people. And then you had to RSVP. And then we had to get it clarified. They did not RSVP. <laughs> and they're yelling like, no one told us this. And then I asked the other coordinator, uh, did you put it on the flyer? And she's like, yeah. And then so I'm like, okay, go get the flyer later. <laughs> and then um, anyways, they ended up leaving. They didn't see the flyer. Uh, she wouldn't go get it later and then i'm still serving people doing the event and one of them comes back and she says miss kimberly <laughs> i am so sorry i'm so sorry and then she comes back with the flyer and she's all like it says to rsvp here i'm so sorry i didn't know and she asked for forgiveness and i told her i'm like thank you i'm like thank you for coming back thank you because you didn't have that pride stopping you because a lot of people will realize it and they'll be like oh like oh yeah i already messed up i messed up yeah and they'll leave it like that but she realized it and she came back to me and she asked for forgiveness and i let her know it was okay i was like with open arms i'm like yeah no no problem and i still served her and, she, and she's all like uh, if you need anything, anything, I will, I'll be here, like, I'll volunteer, you guys need something, I'll go get it, um, I'm here for you guys, 
And so I was like, oh, thank you. And if the other lady, she never came back. She never apologized. <laughs> and like, if she sees me, she'll probably walk away. <laughs> She's and, like, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. And I'm here. I'm like, you can, I'm, I'll still serve you. That's my job too. Yeah. But like, either way, I, I know I'm supposed to be Christ like. And if he forgave me, I'm supposed to forgive. So then, uh, so she comes back and she asks for forgiveness. That's fine. That's cool. It's totally cool. But she never did. And then this person did. And she even wanted to volunteer. And she wanted to have this communication. And she kept, she was there chilling. Uh, when you have reconciliation, something had happened before. Some sin had happened before. Some contentment, some anger, whatever it have, may have been that separated you two. There was something there before. And then when reconciliation comes in, that's when... The forgiveness comes in yeah and like i'm sorry i need to repent i need to come back to you and then that reconciliation fixes a relationship yeah so if we're sinning that means we're away from god and then there's a different type of sin when you're like totally sinning you don't know god at all and then when you are christian and you accidentally lie or something and then the holy spirit automatically tells you like fix yeah. it <laughs> correct it uh, but if you are a Christian and you keep doing this and, oh, I'm, I'm, this is the last time I'm drinking, you know, I can quit whenever I want to. Oh, I, I don't need weed. I can totally quit. But then you need it to go to sleep all the time every night. <laughs> and you're constantly doing something. I mean, everyone has their own convictions or, uh, or drinking. This is the last time I'm drinking. But, you know, you go out every weekend to parties and drink. <laughs> and there's a difference when you're walking in sin and when you accidentally sin like once like a little white lie or something you still have to repent but when you're constantly doing it and you're still going to church and you're still like i'm a believer i'm christian do you think you're right with god or do you think you need to repent and be reconciled to him to let that holy spirit because the holy spirit is holy it is without sin and you're and you are the temple of god how is he supposed to dwell in there and actually speak to you if you're in this position? So we really need that reconciliation back to God. Uh, accepting God for the first time, yes, you are my Lord and Savior, but accepting him every day, taking up your cross. Yes, you are alive, you are real. I have faith in you and that you are watching my every action, that you do want the best for me and that you, these sins that you've put there, I mean, that you, you say our sin is not, just so I don't do it, but it's for my own good. It's to heal my heart. It's to make me whole. It's to make me holy like you. So that when I get to heaven, you can say, you know, I know you, not I do not know you. You stayed yeah. away from me. <laughs> that, would, that would be heartbreaking right there. <laughs> yeah. I want to read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. But before I read that, um, what, two things that I learned from your story of, the two women that were yelling at you is I see it as an example uh, of God. I pretend Kim, she's not God, but in that situation, <laughs> we should be like Jesus. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in that situation, you know, God. And then there's two people, two examples. They both yell, they both sin, they both um, react a way they shouldn't have. And we're going to put it as sin. You know, they both sin. But there's two examples, the one who sins and never comes back and the one who sins and comes and repents and um, asks for forgiveness. And that should be us. That lady that came back to ask for forgiveness, that should be us with God. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, um, he came, uh, she came back to apologize to you and you gladly served her, you know, and you would have continued to do it without it. But it's that reconciliation of the relationship and that's our relationship with god that's how i see it you know where if we sin okay come back and ask for forgiveness and um god is there with open arms like you said it's it was your job to serve her but either way gladly you would have served her again if she wouldn't apologize because that is who you are as a person mm -hmm. you know and when we talk about the character of god that's who he is you know and uh second corinthians 5 18 says uh now everything is from god who reconciled us to himself through christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation 
that is in Christ, God who was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their uh, trespasses against them, and he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Certain that God is appealing through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You know, and like Kim was saying, you know, we should be Christ-like. This is what it's telling us. You know, he gave us that. Um, someone who had never sinned became sin for us. You know, and maybe you're asking yourself, okay, well, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm lost. I'm, I'm that one lady that never came to apologize to God, <laughs> you know, and the example is the other lady, you know, that comes and asks for forgiveness and doesn't hold that um, guilt of, man, I yelled at her, but instead, you know what, how can I serve you? Mm -hmm. How can I come volunteer? How can, if you need help, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And that's how our relationship with God should be. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that reconciliation is a, a building a, a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and if, yeah, where it's not just forgiveness, but it's having a relationship, that's reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those are uh, the steps of acknowledging that we need a savior, acknowledging that that savior is Jesus and living through faith, living um, when we accept it in our hearts and we proclaim it with our mouths. Um, that our faith is so strong that we believe and we are assured that it is him that's coming for us, yeah. you know, and that saves us. So it takes faith to confess because it takes faith. Like, how can you believe someone died 2000 years ago? You didn't see him. So it <laughs> takes faith. And then that's the faith is what is like the foundation of our Christianity. Yeah. If you don't have faith, like, oh, I don't think God can heal me from this. Oh, I don't think God can save me from this. Or he can't really be my hero. Then you're not going to really ask for, for forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah, or for... It's like, because you, you don't, don't even know him. him. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know. This person, does he <laughs> exist? You have doubt. You have to have faith in order to repent. You have to have faith to know he's real. You have to have faith that he can do miracles, that he can be your hero and save you, that he can speak to you. That it's that faith that takes us to that step of repentance, yeah. of reconciliation, of I do want to build this relationship with you. And if you're struggling with your faith, ask him like to build my faith, God, because I can't see it. Like even that parable where it's uh, the guy's asking for a healing for someone else. Oh. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, what does he say? About, I do not, like, I don't really help my unbelief. He even tells Jesus that, help my unbelief so I can believe. So if you're struggling with that, ask him too. You know what? I'm struggling with even believing. Help my unbelief. Because I need you to open my eyes. I really can't do it. And that's also right there asking him to save you. Yeah. To come into your heart for that reproduction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you believe, like, I can't change my ways. I can't. I can't stop doing this. I can't yes, stop sinning. Can. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, like, yes, that's why God came to die for you. He can do it. He let him be the one. Tell him, do it. Do whatever you can. Do whatever you have to do in order to stop it. Because I can't do it. Yeah. Be my hero. Okay, so I'm glad you came over. To Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, all the way from Coachella to San Jacinto, <laughs> <laughs> all in California. And to share this ministry of reconciliation, because it's a ministry. If you read it in uh, the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, we have that ministry of reconciliation. So just because you've been reconciled to God doesn't mean that's it. We have now a ministry of reconciliating people to him. Yeah, that, and that's the biggest thing, you know, and exactly what we did today, you know, there is hope for you. Uh, there is someone who came to save you. And if you had, uh, the Bible tells us, you know, the faith of a little mustard seed, they're tiny, 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 tiny. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all we need um, to be able to express that for mm -hmm. him and to walk a straight path. So, yeah. Yeah, so little mustard seed could do it. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. If this is your first time hearing about Jesus, I hope, you know, you give your life to him. Like, is he real? Like, let me test it out. <laughs> or if it's someone who has been going to church and, you know what, I might not be walking that straight and narrow path. 
and I might not be able to hear him. I might not believe in miracles that much because of my sin. It's keeping me away from him. Or maybe my sin is keeping me away from reading the Bible because I feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pray for all of us today that we see this in a different light. Yeah. So, Jesus, thank you, all, Father, that you have given us life, Jesus, that you have given us breath today, Jesus, to be able to have another chance, Jesus, to seek you, Jesus, to get closer to you, Jesus, to have a deeper relationship with you, Abba Father. I pray for anyone who's watched this and they have a change of heart, that they want to get to know you, they want to accept you, Jesus, that they are able to confess, Jesus, to say, Lord, I am a sinner. I recognize that I fall into one of these categories, that there is something in my life that I feel like if you were to come for me now, I'm not sure where I will go. I pray, Jesus, that you take my life and that sin and that you put it on that cross, oh, Father, that I accept you, Jesus, to come into my life and to change it. That it's not me who's leading my own life anymore, Abba Father, but that it's you. That it's you who's changing my, my walk, my talk, who is making me more like you, that when that day comes and I get to heaven, you accept me, you open the door to me, and that you do know me, that I am your son or I am your daughter. And even if I am someone who has strayed away, that we get reconciled, that I have that ability to even recognize that I have been wrong, that I might not be okay in the walk that I'm having right now. And that I really need you, Jesus, to go ahead and step in and wipe away anything that's in my eyes that's keeping me from being with you completely, Jesus. That I'm not afraid to share your word because I know I'm walking right with you. That I'm able to say it and spread it to other people, your gospel, Jesus, and not feel like a hypocrite but that I'm able to spread it and know, be confident knowing that I am yours and you are mine and that we are reconciled and that we are able to reconcile others to you. Jesus, I pray in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cindy, for coming so over. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you guys, guys for having me. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have this message in you and if you have been struggling with reconciliation that you know you'd be reconciled to him or if you didn't know that this is a ministry that we are supposed to be spreading the gospel and you didn't know how to do it maybe you can take some tips from here on how to reconcile others back to him yeah mm -hmm. so thank you for watching and have a great day bye, bye. <laughs>